Okay, Richard, we are making some fantastic progress. I am really, really pleased with how this part is turning out. We've now finished almost all uh, the finishing operations for the first setup. Now, I know that when we're using CNC machines, we can get some really high tolerance parts, uh, but I want to know if you've got any uh, advice at this stage for how I can do measurement to make sure that my part is within tolerance. Okay, yeah. So there's a couple of things we can do. The good old faithful way, use a set of manual calipers and measure it. Don't lose these, these are mine. There you go. So I want you to measure that very left rib for me that we've got on our part now. Okay, so that rib is 5.05, 5.04, that seems pretty good. So we were aiming for five, so that's within tolerance. Yep, so our tolerance, this is not a customer part, this is a part we're making ourselves. We set a tolerance of 0 0.1 on that, looking at the fit and function. You have hopefully got a drawing with your tolerances on, or you've got to look at what is it doing and apply the correct tolerances there. So this was great, our part was within tolerance. Do you have any advice for if the part is not intolerant? Okay, yeah, so if you find that your components are out of tolerance, you need to have a look at what's causing that. It could be a dramatic programming error that you've done. That's probably less likely than some of the other things that are machine and tool related. So on our machine, we've got our cutting tools. There's two things that could be wrong. The first one is the physical size of the tool is not what we think it is. I mean, I'm not saying that it's completely wrong, but you know, that 16 millimeter end mill that we've put in, is it 16.05? We can use the tool probe on our machine to actually measure that, or we can cut apart and we can measure that as well. The next thing that could be happening is deflection. So the cutting tool that we've got in our machine, over time will become less efficient at cutting. Those sharp flutes become slightly worn and it will actually push away from the material that we're trying to cut. This is called deflection. Now, the code that we've output from Fusion imagines a perfect world where we've got a perfect 16 millimeter tool and we've got zero deflection. As we know, that's very rare and probably is not going to happen. So what we can actually use is something called cutter compensation to actually counteract this and bring our part back into specification. I never want to hear about you using stock to leave to get a part right. That's not what it's used for. So you're gonna be using cutter compensation infusion. In your passes tab, you would have had compensation type set to in computer. Again, that's where Fusion's gonna output the code as if we live in a perfect world. However, if you set that to in control, you'll now be able to use the offset table in our controller to actually shift ever so slightly the toolpath we're creating to bring the part in tolerance. You've measured 5.05. You now look at how far away is that from your perfect position and you'd apply that then into the tool table as a wear offset. Okay, fantastic. So basically we're measuring the part, we're learning about things about how the tool might have been worn down or deflecting and we can actually account for that using the controller, which is amazing. So do I need to be measuring every single feature for every single tool? And if I'm making lots of different parts, am I gonna have to come in and measure every single one? Or should, is there some good tools I can use or approaches so that I don't have to spend too much time measuring? Okay, interesting. So when it comes to what to measure on your part, you could be guided by your drawing. Does it have high tolerance items on there that you need to measure? Does it have significant features on there that need to be recorded? As a rule of thumb, what I would say is look at what your tools are doing. If you've got 10 holes on a part and you're using the same tool to machine all those 10, I would just check the last one it made. The chances are if the last one's right, they're all gonna be right. Maybe for the first one you do, check them all. There could be something about the fixturing or the machine that's causing one of them to be wrong. But once you've got that part dialed in, I just checked the last one it made. And if you're doing a huge production run, you're gonna to have to get a feel for what's the likelihood of that going out of specification. You might start checking them every one for the first few hundred. Once you get some confidence around the process, then you might start dialing that back 
and doing intermittent checks at a certain interval. Okay, fantastic. So we've used the calipers. Um, they work, they're tried and true. Is there a more high-tech way of doing things? Yes, there is. We've got a probe in our machine tool. You can actually use that probe to measure that rib on the left-hand side and update our cutter comp automatically. So, I've actually made you some NC code here with some probing code on it. I want you to load that and run it for me. Okay, so now, this is just the G code like we had before, but instead of driving a cutting tool, this is gonna drive the probe that is on the machine. Correct, it's G code just like you've run before, but for the probe this time. Now, I want everyone to go out there to start using their probes like their end mills. Now, I don't mean plowing it through your material. I mean use it as frequently and as often as your cutting tools. Use it at the start to set your stock up. Use it in the middle of your process for in-process validation. You could even use it in the end to create comprehensive inspection reports that you can supply to your customer. Fantastic. Well, we've got the probe toolbar set up, so let's run that and see how it goes. Perfect. Let's go. And that is a wrap for this series. Thank you so much for watching our From Start to Part video series. Hopefully you found this useful and learned something along the way. If so, why not like and subscribe and also leave us some comments down below. We'd love to hear your feedback or suggestions for future video series. You can also tag us on social media if you create a part, maybe you haven't been inspired by watching this series. The handles are in the description below. Really appreciate you watching and see you again next time. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and click to watch the next video.